Hello everyone, today I'm going to be trying to make a fog chiller with no ice, so let's get started. If you don't know what a fog chiller is, it's basically a box that you run your fog machine smoke through and it makes it stick low to the ground, and it's a really cool effect in my opinion. Fog machines rely on heat to work, so the heat basically makes it so that the smoke doesn't stick to the ground, and um, it, that doesn't really look cool for Halloween. So I'm going to be trying to make a fog chiller that doesn't require ice. So this was my first ever design that I attempted way back when I was a freshman. Um, I watched zero tutorials for this, and it is a styrofoam cooler with basically just one of those bags of ice you get from like a gas station in it. And I mean, you can see it barely put out any. Um, I later hooked the fog hose up to it, and it actually did work pretty well, but the fog hose didn't fit on my high wattage machine, and... It, my high wattage machine was actually too powerful for this design. So I decided to change it to a three inch dryer duct. And that didn't work well either because one, there wasn't enough flow Two, the ice would just like melt within like 15 minutes of use. So I eventually settled on this design that I've been using for the past two years. This is a four inch downspout with a bunch of frozen water bottles inside. Now, this has some problems. Number one, the water bottles melt after about 30 minutes to an hour of usage, so the fog sticks to the ground significantly less. Number two, when the only pressure that this relies on is the pressure from the fog machine pump, so when the fog machine is idle, there's just no pressure, and it just flows back through the intake. So that's definitely not an amazing design. So I'm hoping to fix those flaws with this new design. I'm going to try to step it up this year, and I'm going to be trying to make an ultrasonic fog chiller. So, these are the parts I already have here. I have four of these four-inch clamps for... I got these in the HVAC section of Home Depot. This was a dryer vent that I cut up, another four-inch dryer vent. I have a six-inch section for the intake, a 30-inch section for the pre-inline fan exhaust, and a 40-inch section for the post-inline fan exhaust. And I have two of these four inch, these are for like a toilet. Um, I got these out of plumbing, but you know, this will, this is basically, this is gonna go in the box so that this, this part is protruding. So it'll make it easier to put these on. I have some silicone I'm gonna be sealing these with as well. But I also have this, I don't know if you guys remember this. I made a video about it. And I actually, I'd, I'd recommend you go watch that video. In my opinion, it's actually one of my good older videos. Um, I did a modification. I have this little button here. Um, so this is my generic 1200 watt fog machine. Um, it still works. And this is an 18 gallon tote. So I got this from Walmart. So you see 18 gallon tote. It's good size. Um, and I'm waiting on two parts from Amazon and that is my inline fan and my ultrasonic mister. Which, by the way, Amazon thinks I'm trying to grow my because they're recommending me, like, grow tents now. So that's that's great. So, yeah, um, I'm going to actually start doing measurements for these so we can cut them off. Because we're going to have an intake on one side and an exhaust on the other side. And that inline fan's hopefully going to help have, uh, you know, negative pressure so that it doesn't rely on the pressure from just the fog machine. I've marked the holes where I want to cut them. Um, I'm going to... Go out with a Dremel and cut these, and I'm also, I think I'm going to cut this, the outer plastic part off, um, just so it's like this little bit, because I don't think this is necessary, um, and I'm probably going to Dremel that off too, because like I said, I do have two of these here, and I'm, I'm also going to silicone these in, so it's, I'm going to silicone on them on the inside to act as glue, and then on the outside to act as a sealant, so, yeah. It landed over there, interesting. Probably not that great. Yeah, it needs to be expanded a little. I can't find my silicone. I'm gonna have to drive to Home Depot and get some more. Here we go, so now we've got it in. It's not glued in, or it's not siliconed in yet. Um, I said I was gonna cut this part off. Um, I started to, then I realized I don't wanna be breathing in PVC fumes for the next like 15 minutes, so. You know, it's fine. Nobody's gonna see it on the inside, right? So this is unrelated, but I think because of the heat from the bit, um, it, you see it created this like membrane sort of thing. Um, that's actually pretty cool.
If you have a hole saw, it'd be a lot easier to use that, by the way. So I didn't record the process because I forgot to wear gloves and I got silicone all over my hands and I, I like quite literally couldn't even use my phone. But it's in there now. I used pretty much the whole tube. I didn't buy the small one. I bought the bigger one. It's actually, that's covered. I'm, I'm going to put on gloves. I'm going to try to clean this up. All right, so now we're done with the modification to the um, bin. I let it dry overnight and I cut off all the excess silicone with a knife so you can see this is good. You know, you definitely, I mean, maybe I should have read the instructions how to use the silicone, but it's it's secure in there. Um, I'll show you the inside. The inside's a lot less clean. Yeah, so, you know, it doesn't really matter how the inside looks, though, as long as it holds the water. Um, now we're going to put these dryer vents on. How these metal clamps work is actually pretty self-explanatory. You just, you slide it over the vent and then you tighten it righty-tighty until it gets to the desired tightness. So we got the 32 inch section of the hose on, as well as the little um, 9 inch intake section. So now we need to wait for my inline fan to arrive and we're going to put it here and then we're going to have this longer section go all the way out so yeah i want to test how bad the leaks around here are because if they are pretty bad then i will seal them up but i think with the um negative pressure the like lack of a seal around the lid won't be too much of a problem so i have my low wattage machine here it's my 400 watt machine wow i probably should have cleaned it off before i turned it on you see it's starting to warm up a little um Wow, that smells like extremely stale fog juice. I think the last time I used this was like May. Oh, it's on. Okay. Hey, the leaks aren't even that bad. I'm gonna turn you off. Yeah, it mostly just came out this side. Yeah, that's actually not even that bad, low key. And that's no negative pressure either. Like, I bet it's, yeah, full of fog. And it's the leak out of here. Look, it's not that bad. Um, so I, I don't think sealing it will be necessary. So, yeah, I just wanted to test that real quick. I'm making some chicken right now. But our inline fan got here. So we're going to go up and install this. All right, so here's our fan. It's, it's pretty cheap. It's made of plastic. The brand of this is quite literally fan go fast so let's hope the fan actually goes fast here we've got the power supply with the control on it oh that's moving a lot of air that's low speed let's turn it up a little wow That moves a lot of air. All right, this will. This is a good fan. Um, I'm gonna put this in line with the ducts, and we'll t we'll uh, check how good the negative pressure is. You guys aren't gonna believe this. I was just sitting here screwing in my inline fan up with these clamps, and the ultrasonic mister arrived. So we'll be able to get hopefully get this working today. The demonstration you're gonna see today isn't gonna have the fog fluid. I'm actually gonna use. I'm gonna use. Froggy's Swamp Juice. I have some like cheap American DJ stuff over there I'm gonna use for this, but that's just because that's all I have All right, so now with the fan in the duct, let's test how much pressure this pulls Whoa, there's crazy intake coming in from here Oh, yeah, this will work so now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna fill the tub up with water from my bathtub and try out this mister. All right, so we just filled up this tub. This is, I'd say this is a good amount of water. I don't really know, there's no like on or off switch, so I guess I'm just gonna plug it in, put it in the water. Oh, there's a little blue light. That might be a good thing, I don't know. Damn, does it not fit? Oh, it kinda does. Oh, there we go. Ooh. All right, there we go. It doesn't fit that well in the bin, but it does fit. 
and it's making a whole lot of mist. And this is all water, by the way. None of this is from the fog machine. So this is nice. So if you're going to use a 12 head mister, I'd strongly recommend using a bigger tank than an 18 gallon. Uh, you see it barely fits in there. Now it does sink when the water level lowers, which is what we want. That's the whole point of the floats. Because if you didn't have the floats, you'd have to set up like another bin with a water pump and that'd be a huge pain to do. But you see if it's on these floats, you see, it works just fine. Now it does splash a little bit of water out of here um, not that much out of here so I don't think the moisture will be too much of a problem and also that ran is, that fan is rated for moisture so I'm gonna drill a hole so I can run the cord through and I'm gonna seal it with some hot glue so then we're gonna go out and test it so I cut a hole for the wire in the uh, ultrasonic mister. I'm just holding it because I filled it in with hot glue. Um, Shenzhen Red Banner Electrical Technology Company. That sounds... But anyway, so I'm waiting for this to dry and then I'm, we'll install the ducts and the fog machine and we'll test it. And even without the high density fluid, we can get a general idea how this effect looks. So here it is with just the mister and it's actually working pretty well. It's high speed. So it's pushing out a good amount. Now we're just waiting for this machine to heat up and then it should be ready. It's ready. All right, well, so first thing we're gonna do is plug the mister in and then we're gonna turn the fan on, put on halfway and we'll hit on. Well, this is it at halfway. What? Bump up the fan speed all the way. This is it all the way, and this is a windy day, keep in mind. And this isn't meant to be low lying fog fluid either. That is a little bit too fast. There we go. So, about halfway gets you the best result here. coming out actually a little warm so I'm wondering I could probably put some frozen water bottles in here but you can see the effect is working see it does kind of go up but that's also because it's a little windy out today if we use the actual low-lying stuff it'd probably look a lot better here it is working a little better um, there's less wind out you see it just sticks to the ground so what I did after this clip is I basically cut a four inch hole and a slit into the box that the ultrasonic mister came in. And I remember, I remember trying to do this with the downspout method, but since there was no negative pressure, it didn't work that well. If you want that like blanket, I'd strongly recommend doing this. It's all you need is a pair of scissors. I wrap mine in duct tape. So it, you know, it doesn't just look like a cardboard box. Um, here's the results when I did that. And this is still with the ADJ F1L premium. Now, the swamp juice actually did arrive today, but I don't feel like setting this back up and using it. So I'm just going to give you some closing thoughts on this design, as well as maybe some design flaws I'm going to be fixing. So, number one, I'm just going to take all this off. Um, this, bin, this bin is enough volume for this, but it's not really wide enough, so that, that's caused me to have to put the mister at this, this angle you see here. Um, sorry, I have all the other stuff in here for storage, but you see the mister is kind of at this angle. It still works though. It's just, you know, this is, you know, that's not that ideal. By the way, don't touch this while it's running. You'll get shocked. I learned that the hard way. Apparently there's no, um, well, apparently it just makes the whole, like everything, you know, 48 volts. So that's, that's great. Um, so yeah, don't touch the water while it's misting and another thing is I may fill these weights up with water so that it kind of sinks a little lower because if the mister is lower that means there's less like you know water droplets coming out and then that's less water that'll potentially get in this fan and you know destroy this fan because 
this fan did get some water in it with my de with my demonstration. I mean, it's a twenty dollar fan, and if it lasts me, you know, a couple seasons, I'd be okay with that. But I don't want to, you know, go out of my way and destroy it. So I'm gonna hopefully try to reduce the water splash by filling these so the sink's a little lower. You see, I drew I drew the fill line finally. Oh, that's cool. It's reflecting off there. Um, I drew the fill line, and that's. See, that's actually just about perfect how I have it, um, because, you know, this needs to be like an inch or two underwater. So, yeah, if you're going to do this, I'd recommend definitely getting a longer bin. Like, 18 gallons is enough volume, but it's like, it's not really long enough, you can tell. Um, another thing is when I'm, um, that demonstration I showed you guys was using warm hose water. Like, I didn't even flush the hose out before I filled it, I just straight... You know, hose sitting in the sun, just so, you know, um, I've heard putting ice in your water is bad for the mister, but I think like just cold sink water would work the best. You know, a lot of people say you have to use room temperature water, but I think, I think cold sink water would work the best. I don't know though. Um, another thing is I'm going to be sealing this with, uh, duct tape when I'm actually using it. You see, I'm just going to put some down here to seal it just so it's a little better yeah this is going to be using high density juice and i'm probably also going to put a couple frozen water bottles at the end of this output vent if the effect isn't that great with my upgrades um you saw it actually it did work pretty well it definitely worked better than the downspout method but those are some minor improvements you could probably do so overall, I'd consider this project uh, this project a success. It was pretty cool to do. Hey guys, if you're watching to the end, that probably means you're an actual fan of my YouTube channel. And I'd just like to say, I started my junior year of high school about two months ago, and I've been extremely busy. I've had no time to do these projects, so. If my uploads are a little less than usual these next couple months, then that's why. I've just been really busy with school and other things. So yeah, thank you for watching and thanks for supporting me.